Greetings in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hi, this is Pastor Bobby Paul. I'd like to welcome you today to the internet broadcast of Albany Family Worship Center. Albany Family Worship Center is located at 3024 Kensington Court in Albany, Georgia. Our service times are Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. for midweek Bible study and Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. for morning worship. I hope this message encourages you today and draws you ever closer to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Have a blessed day and always remember this, Jesus loves you. Everybody got the Bibles this morning? Hold them on, let me see them. Somebody shout amen. If you ain't got a Bible, grab a pew Bible. Amen. I want you to go to the book of Jude. Book of Jude, the very last book of the Bible before Revelation. Jude. And I want you to find verse number 20. And we're going to be talking this morning about laying... A good foundation. You know, you can't build anything without a good foundation. If you try to build a building or, or build a workshop, a workshop or whatever without a good foundation, it is eventually going to begin to lean and fall over. I don't know if any of you ever watched them lay a foundation of a house. But they'll dig a good hole in the ground and they'll put rebar in it and, and they'll bring the concrete in and that concrete might have a, a, a fiber in it. They'll begin to pour that foundation and as that foundation sets up, then they come in and begin to break, lay a block and mortar in there and build that foundation up so they can begin to build that house on that foundation. And they do that, they lay that good foundation so when years to come, that house won't fall. And, and it's the same way with our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. We've got to have a good, strong, firm foundation. Without that, we'll soon be swept away. We'll soon fall. We'll soon not be able to stand against the situations of our life. Can anybody hear what I'm saying this morning? Say amen. Jesus said if you build your life on the, on the rock, which is Jesus Christ, on your faith in Him, when the storms come, when the floods raise against you, you will stand. Because of that firm foundation. And I want that's what I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about some principles or foundations on what our faith is built upon. Amen. Are you willing to go along with me this morning and say amen? Well, if everybody's in the book of Jude, say amen. Find verse 20 and stand to your feet. We're going to read one verse of Scripture. Jude, verse number 20. But ye, beloved, I want you to look at your neighbor right now and say, He's talking to me. He's talking to blood-bought, born-again believers. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Hello. Building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Ooh, just, just one or two folks got a hold of that praying in the Holy Ghost. So saith the Word of God. Father, bless the reading of your Word today. Lord God, use this living and powerful Word to help us build a firm foundation on our most holy faith. Father God, I pray right now under the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit that he would use this Word to impact our lives, to change us, to mold us and make us into the men and the women that he wants us to be, to draw us ever closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father God, come right now under the power of your Holy Ghost and touch us and give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive what you have in store for us this day. And Father God, as I stand before you right now, 
God, I ask you to forgive me where I failed you, Lord. Forgive me of my sins. To cleanse me, Father, that I can stand before you right now and receive your mercy and grace. Lord God, let your words be my words, your thoughts my thoughts, your love in my heart, Jesus, that it flows out and touches every one in this room and under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name we pray and say, we love you, Jesus. Come on, everybody. We love you, Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. You may be seated and give God a hand clap of praise this morning. What are some of the principles of the foundation of our most holy faith? What, what are, there's so many people today I see, say, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the Word of God. But then when you look at their lives, there's nothing there. Hello. When you look for the fruit, there's nothing there. And, and because they have a they have, they are believing on Jesus and not believing in Jesus. See, there's a difference. When you, when you believe in Jesus and not just about Jesus, there is things in your life that testify to the, to the principles or foundations of your holy faith. Am I making sense to somebody in here this morning? Say amen. Well, the first one is this. You have to believe that God is. Hello. Hello. You have to believe that God is. God is not a myth. God is not a fable. He's not some concept of one's imagination. I'm here to tell you today, God is. Hello, God is. It says in Hebrews 11, 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is is that God is real, that God's not just some nice idea, God just not some imaginary fable or myth to make you feel good, but God is. God is the one that created the world and the universe and all things in it, not some Big Bang Theory. Hello? I've never understood that because if I remember my first grade math, uh, nothing and nothing equals nothing. you got to have something. Amen. And that something was God when he said, let there be light. And he began to create. Amen. Because God is. And just as he worked in the beginning, he'll work right now in your life. Because, see, that's the kind of God he is. He is God. He is the maker. He is the creator. He is the savior. He is the rescuer. He is the deliverer. He is the healer. He is your all in all. Amen. Can somebody hear what I'm saying today? Jesus said in John 8, 51, when he was talking to the religious leaders of the day, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. He was claiming to be God. Amen? Because he was God. Amen? God is today. There's, there's no misconception about that. God told Moses in Exodus 3.14, and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, that thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me. Do you hear what I'm saying? I am that I am. The great I am. In other words, you can translate it as this. God is what you need him to be in the greatest hour of your need because God is. Can somebody hear what I'm saying today? God is eternal and everlasting. There is no beginning and there is no end. He goes on forever and ever, ever. He's better than that little energizer bunny beating that drum. Amen. That little energizer bunny just keeps going and going. God keeps on going and going and going till everything else is gone. Amen. And he always has been. There never was a time when there wasn't God. Do you understand what I'm saying? He's eternal. He's from everlasting. Psalm 41, 13. 
Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. And amen. Psalms 106, 48. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. And let all the people say, Amen. Praise ye the Lord. See, we serve an everlasting God. He was before the beginning of time, and He will be here after everything is long gone. He is. It says in Revelation 1, 8, I am the Alpha and the, and, the, and the omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. He is, He is, somebody say God is. God is the everlasting God. The second thing you need to know is this, God never changes. Hello? God never changes. There's never, any, there's never any changing in God. It says in Malachi 3.6, For I am the Lord, I change not. Do you hear what I'm saying? I change not. God does not change. Hebrews 10, uh, uh, Hebrews 1, 10 through 12 says this, And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest. And they all shall wax old as doth a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall fail not. Do you hear what I'm saying to you today? God doesn't change. If God did it then, He'll do it now. If God did it for them, He'll do it for you. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? God does not change. There's no, people may change. The world may change. Your situation may change. Do you hear what I'm saying? But God never changes. He's the same yesterday. It says in Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. James 1, 17 says, With whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. You can come to God and receive the same blessings. Amen? See, God's still a God that saves. God's still a God that's, that, 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 that blesses. God's still a God that heals. I don't know where people come up with this. God doesn't heal anymore. Hello? And, and I don't know why people think, why people are trying to preach nowadays that all roads lead to heaven. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches there's only one way to heaven, and that's through, that's through Calvary's cross. That's through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the only way. God never changes. Now, sometimes we have to change the way we do things to serve Him, to get lined up with Him. Do you hear what I'm saying? You know, we're bad about getting stuck in the mud. <coughs> Hello? How many, how many of you don't like change? Come on, raise your hand. Let's get honest with each other. Look here, don't, don't rock my boat. Amen? Don't, don't, move, my, don't, don't move my stuff. Amen? My wife is the world's worst about when she cleans up. Am I the only man in here that has to deal with that? That when she, she puts stuff up. And she can't even remember where she puts it up. Amen? I don't like change. Don't mess with my stuff. Don't mess with my... Don't, don't mess with my routine. Amen? And bless the Lord, that little nine-year-old John Daniel is just like, don't mess with his routine. He's got a certain way he does things. Don't you step outside of that. But sometimes we got to change. Hello. As much as we don't like it, as much that it bothers us, hello. Sometimes we got to change to keep up with an unchanging God. Does anybody hear what I'm saying in here today? See, God never changes. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And he, if He done it then, He'll do it now. If he healed then, he'll heal now. If he worked miracles then, he'll work miracles now. If he baptized with the Holy Spirit then, he'll baptize with the Holy Spirit now. Amen? You just got to be willing to go along with him because our God never changes. The third thing you need to know is this. Our God is just. Amen? 
uh, not only is he is, God is, God's real. He never changes. He's a just God. So many people think that God, uh, sometimes when things begin to happen in their life, when things begin to go on, they think God is being unjust to them. But God is never unjust. See, you see, God, God never does anything unjust or unrighteous. Do you hear what I'm saying to you today? Uh, uh, it says in Isaiah 45, 21, Tell ye, and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together, who hath declared this from ancient time, who hath told it from that time. Have not I the Lord, and there is no God else beside me, a just God and Savior. There is none besides me. God is a just God. God, God never judges unjustly. He never condemns unjustly. Everything he does is just and right. Do you hear what I'm saying? All things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. God knows what he's doing. We're the ones that don't always understand. Am I the only one in that boat this morning? There's a lot of times I don't understand what's going on. Amen? I don't understand why things are happening. But then i got to remember I serve a just God, and nothing's going to go on that he doesn't have his hand in. Amen? Or he doesn't allow. Because he knows what he's doing. Amen? He knows exactly what we need when we need it. Now, there's a lot of times we think we need things and we don't. Amen? I want a brand new Ford F-250. But I've got a little old Ford F-150 that gets me where I'm going. Amen. God knows what I need. That's how often times we complain and we moan and we groan. Oh, am I talking to somebody out there today? We get we 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 just we just get get a get a mad on it, God, and don't realize He's doing everything for our good. He's trying to teach us something. He's trying to show us something. He's trying to build us up. He's trying to strengthen us. He's trying to draw us closer to Him. Do you hear what I'm saying you day? He is a just God. And listen, there's no partiality with God. Everyone is the same in the eyes of God. It says in Romans 10, 12, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. God's got what you need today. Well, God just won't bless me. He's blessing Brother Wonderful better than he's blessing me. He's blessing Sister Bertha better than you better than he's blessing me. No, God will bless you just the same. You just got to figure out, you just got to figure out what, mm, what's going on in your life. What sin you hadn't repented from. Hello? What, what, what has God told you not to do that you, that you still do it? What has God told you to do that you're not doing? Hello? Is your life lining up with the Word? God blesses his faithful, amen, because, because our God is a just God. Does anybody hear what I'm saying this morning? Say amen. The fourth thing you need to know is this. God is truth, and his word is truth. It says in John 14, 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except through me. There's no, there's no error in God. Hello, y'all ain't, somebody ain't, 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 ain't getting on, uh, in on that with me. There's no error in God. God is truth, amen? And his word is true. It said in Titus 1, 1 through 2, Paul, a servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness and hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie. God can't tell a lie. If God was to tell a lie, he'd no longer be righteous. If God was to tell a lie, he'd no longer be holy. If God was to tell a lie, he'd no longer be just. He'd no longer be the God that changes not. He'd be a liar. He'd be in the same boat with Satan because the Bible says Satan is a liar and he's the father of him. When he speaks, he speaks from his own self because he speaks from a lie. God cannot lie. 
But why? Because God is truth. When God makes you a promise, God keeps it. Why? Because he swears by himself. Hebrews 6, 13. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. Why? Because God is true. There's no lying in God. And you can take that as the gospel today, amen? And, and not only is God himself true, but his word is true. There is no error in his word. I know there's a lot of people say, well, I find discrepancies. No, you won't find no discrepancy in the word of God. If you'll study it out, if you'll look into it, if you'll really get down into it, you'll find there's no error in the word of God, amen? His word is true. John, Jesus said in John 17, 17, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. Psalms 119, 142, Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is truth. Of verse 151 of Psalms 119, Thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are truth. You can take this, the word of God, to the bank because it is is true. The fifth thing, the fifth principle you need to know is this. God is all powerful. Hello, somebody hear me today. God is all powerful. You know, there's so many times when things start going on in our life, we won't begin to pray and seek out God because we think that our situation is too much for God to handle. Hell, is somebody hearing me right now? We think that God can't handle our situation because our faith is not strong enough to believe God for the miracle. Hello? I got news for you today. You can go with God just as far as you will and let your faith take you. Amen? Somebody hear me. Because our God is an all-powerful God. I want to say that again. Our God is an all-powerful God. There is nothing greater than God. There is no sin too big He cannot forgive you for. There is no problem too complicated that He cannot deliver you from. Do you hear what I'm saying today? Luke 137, For with God nothing shall be impossible. Hello. Now, I like that, knowing I serve a God that's so powerful, nothing is impossible for him today. Amen. That no matter what I face pales in comparison to my God. It says, it says in Matthew 19, 26, But Jesus beheld him and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Listen, there's things impossible for us earthly men, for us fleshly men. But with our righteous, holy, and just God, who is all-powerful, nothing is beyond his reach, his scope, or his ability to accomplish. We serve a can-do God. Can somebody hear what I'm saying today? John 4, 1 John 4, 4, why, why is that? Why is that a God? Why is there nothing impossible in our life with God? 1 John 4, 4 answers that question for us is this. Ye are God, little children, and, overcome, and have overcome then, because greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. You know, we have a bad habit sometimes of te Come on now. Everybody listen to me. You need to write this one down. We have a bad habit sometimes of telling God how big our problem is. If we stop and turn that around and start telling our problems how big our God is, we see a difference. Amen. Come on, Come on now. Come on. Start telling, hey, my God, my, my God's bigger than you. My, dad, my, my daddy's bigger than your daddy. How many of you as a kid, somebody messing with you, you told them that. You better be careful. My daddy's bigger than your daddy. Well, guess what? My daddy's bigger than them all. Amen. There's nothing in Paul. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Do, do you understand that this morning? One person does. Amen. There's nothing. Is there? Listen, listen. There's nothing you face that God can't get you through. Because greater is he that's in you. 
than he that's in the world. Amen. I thank God for that today. That there's nothing I face. There's no trial I go through. There's no storm that blows. There's no problem that arises. There's no financial difficulty. There's no, there's no sickness. There's no trouble in the family. There's no trouble at work. There's no trouble in the friendship. There's no trouble. There's no trouble. There's no trouble that my God can't handle for me when I cast all my cares on him because he cares for me. Did somebody hear what I'm saying? The, woo, but the problem, we won't get our hands off of it sometimes. We got any fixers in the house? Come on now. Likes to fix everything. Hello? Come, I, I can't, y'all don't look at me so sanctimonious. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You want to fix every situation. Amen. You meddle in every... Oh, whoo. Get away from it. You can't do nothing about it. Hello? Is somebody here what I'm saying this morning? There ain't nothing you can do about it. You need to let God have it, amen, because nothing's impossible. When, when you don't let God have it completely, you're telling God, well, you know, Lord, I, I don't believe you can do what, what you said you can do in my life. He can do anything because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. If you believe that, give God a hand clap of praise this morning. Next thing you need to know is this. Our God is a faithful God. Hello? Hello? Our God is a faithful God. You can depend on Jesus when you can't depend on nobody else. How I many you know that, that, a, that a person's going to let you down at some time? I don't care if it's your wife, your husband, your best friend, or, or, or the person you've worked for for 30 years, the person you've worked beside for 40 years, they're going to let you down one day. They may not do it on purpose, but they'll let you down. They'll break your heart. Ain't no heart broke for folks and they ain't never had the heart broke, is it? Come on. Folks will hurt you. Whether by accident or by meanness. But Jesus, you can always depend on Jesus. It says in Hebrews 13, 5, 6, let your, cover, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with be content with be content with I want to say that again because somebody's going to hear me when I do. Be content with such things as ye have. Some of you wanting too much. You're not satisfied with what Jesus has already given you. And you're never going to get anything else. You're never going to. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying? Until you become satisfied with what the Lord has already given you. Can't, oh, y'all didn't like that, did you? One person said, come on, everybody else just kind of looking at me. Y'all know I'm talking the truth. Be content with such things as ye have. Be content with what God has already given you. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. God will never take his hands off you as long as you walk in by faith and not by sight. Because he's a faithful God. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Who's your helper today? Who's seeing you through today? Do you realize, do you realize, do you realize that if God's hand wasn't on your life? Do you realize that? If God's hand wasn't on your life, where would you be right now? Most of us be dead. Amen? Most of us, most of oh, somebody, come on. We're only him because God's watching over us. Amen. The Lord is my helper. I like, I like being helped. Amen. There's a lot of times I face things. I don't know about that. There's a lot of times I face things I ain't never faced before. And I asked the Lord, Lord, how am I going to get this? Get through this, he said, with me. Amen. And he goes on and does what he says he's going to do. He helps me. He sees me through it. As long as I learn to be content. It says in 2 Thessalonians 3.3, 3, But the Lord is faithful. But the Lord is faithful. Who shall establish you and keep you from evil. God's going to watch over you. 
He's a faithful God. He ain't called you out to watch you drown, honey. He ain't called you out to watch you fail. He's called you out to prosper. He's called you out to succeed. Do you hear what I'm saying to you in here today? Because that's the kind of God He is. You might have to face hard times. Hello? You might have to face hard times. But Jesus will always be there to calm your storm. It says in Hebrews 10, 23, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. When, when Jesus called the disciples to get in the boat to go to the other side of the sea, he knew that storm was coming. And as they crossed that sea and, that, and, that, and, a, and, and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. He was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. If you'll depend on Jesus, he'll calm your storm today. Quit running around like a chicken with your head cut off. You know, we make fools of ourselves. Mm, didn't like that, did we? We make fools of ourselves so often times that when them storms come up, we start going crazy running here and running there, trying this and trying that, and nothing happens, and we just get in a work of predicament where we just stop and cry out to Jesus. He stood up in the bow of our boat and said, Peace be still and there would have been a great calm amen he said my peace I give unto you he'll give you peace today we just got to be willing to to let him have control when Peter walked on that water when, when the storm rose up and the disciples in the boat by the sail and Jesus began to walk across the waves towards him and they saw him, and everybody looked at him and got afraid but Peter looked at him and said Lord if it be thou bid me come unto thee on the water and he said come and when Peter was come down out of that boat he walked on the water to go to Jesus but when he saw the wind bosterous he was afraid and beginning to sink he cried saying Lord save me see that's the problem when things go to getting windy when things go to getting rough when things start to happen now we get afraid well I reckon this is it this time I'm going down I'm finna fall. I'm finna fail. Oh, I can't get out of this. Come on now. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Peter was walking on that water to Jesus till he began to pay attention to what was going on around. You got to get your focus off of, off of what's going on around you and get it back on Jesus. And then cry out to him. Peter said, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, mm, wherefore dost thou doubt? Why doubt him? He'll be there for you. You might have to walk. You might have to get a little wet. Hello? You might have to get a little wet, but God's going to lift you above that flood. Amen. It says in 1 Peter 5, 10, But the God of grace who has called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. God is a faithful God. Amen. The seventh thing you need to know is this this morning. And if you don't remember anything else, remember this. God loves you. Come on, God loves you. Amen. God loves you. It says in Romans 5, 8, but God commanded his love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You'll never know a greater love than the love of Jesus Christ for you. And I like that word commanded. It means God loves you on purpose today. See, people love you because they're getting something from you. I hate, I hate to put it that way. I, I'm not trying to be ugly. Please, 
Don't, don't take me wrong. But that's, that's the reason why. God doesn't expect anything from you, but He still loves you. God didn't, God didn't say, well, you go, you go, you go and get yourself straightened out first and then come back and then we'll talk about me loving you. Do you hear what I'm saying? God doesn't say, oh, I'll go and stop this and stop that. No, God just loves you. Even when you was dead in trespass and sin, God loves you. It says in 1 John 4, 9 through 10, And this was manifested, the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. Herein is love, not like that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation of our sins. God loved you when you was unlovable. And he proved it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, to condemn you, but that the world through him might be saved. See, God loves you so much, God wishes for no person, no man, no woman to perish but that all might come to the knowledge of the truth. First Peter, Second Peter 3, 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the repentance. First Timothy 2, 4, Who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. And what is that truth today? that we're all sinners dying and going to hell unless Jesus Christ intervenes. Romans 3, 10 through 23 says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. For we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Have you received that gift of God today? Have you been born again a child of the Most High God? Are you building on a foundation of faith in your life? Is He the God that is in your life? There can be no, no other. He must be your God today. And he's a God that never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You've got to believe that. And you've got to believe that he's just and righteous. That he is what he says he is. And that he's true and that his word is truth. There's no error in it. And that he's all powerful. There's nothing impossible for God in your life. That he is faithful to you no matter what. And that he loves you today. And if you'll, just, if you'll just confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved today. You will be rescued today. You can be born again today. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Are you willing to do that today? Are you willing to kneel down before a mighty God and say, Lord, I believe you died for me, that you were buried, and that you rose again on the third day? I believe that you, are, you have ascended into heaven and now seated on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for me daily. Right now, Jesus, I confess all my sins to you, and I ask you to forgive me and to cleanse me and to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior forevermore. If you'll do that right now, you'll start a journey with a firm foundation, with a good foundation, and build up with the things that we've talked about this morning. And you will see a difference in your life. All heads are bowed. All eyes are closed. There's nobody looking around. This is your time with God. Will you come this morning? Will you come and kneel down on the foundation which is Jesus Christ this morning? There is no other. It must be upon Jesus. It must be upon your faith in Him today. And begin to build 
on your most holy faith. Hi, this is Pastor Bobby Paul again. I hope you enjoyed today's message. It has encouraged and drawn you ever closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And there may be some of you out there today that's made a decision of faith. That is the decision to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And it's so simple to do today. The Bible teaches us that if we'll just confess with our mouth and believe in our heart the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. For whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you can call upon him right now by saying this simple prayer of faith. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me, a sinner. Right now, Lord, I turn from sin and self, and I turn to you, Jesus, and I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, I give you all authority, control, and care of my life. Be my Lord and Savior forevermore. I love you, Jesus. Amen. If you just said that prayer, you just become a blood-bought, born-again child of God. And we would love to hear your decision here at Albany Family Worship Center. And here's how you can contact us. You can write us at Albany Family Worship Center, 3024 Kensington Court, Albany, Georgia, 31721. You can send us an email, and our email address is my afwc at gmail.com that's myafwc at gmail.com or you can call us at 229-434-0342 we're looking forward to hearing from you today and we would love for you to come and visit we'd love to meet you and the family have a blessed day and always remember this jesus loves you <music>